Worlds don't dominate themselves, and ruthlessly efficient evil mountain lairs don't just happen. To become a true evil genius, you need to be a resource management master, so here's some tips on keeping the evil flowing. Dastardly masterminds need more than just terrifying traps and muscle minions to succeed. Evil Genius 2 is a management game after all, and ascending to world domination requires careful planning. If you're finding yourself running out of juice, starving for gold, or not climbing the ladder of villainy as quickly as you'd like, then don't worry, we've got you covered. Here's how to keep your resources abundant, your evil flowing, and your operations running smoother than butter. Before we dig into it, remember to hit the subscribe button and give the bell a little tinkle to get all our new videos as they drop. And thanks to all of you who've already joined Team Evil. Now, on with the show. When problems arise in your genius's plans for world domination, they often begin in the control room. Think of it like a particularly amoral shop floor. The more space you have, the more you can sell. The less space you have, the less money you're going to rake in. Broadcast strength allows you to maintain criminal networks and scout new ones on the world map. No available broadcast strength means no new networks. No new networks means no fresh income. And if your base and minion capacity continue to grow while your income stays the same, you're going to find yourself in a gold shortage, friend. So don't be shy with these radio repeaters. Build more than you think you'll need. During the mid-game, you'll need tons of them. Think like a megalomaniac, basically, and go, well, mega. It's one of the wisest ways to spend gold, and it's going to return your investment, and then some. If you're in a bind, try picking up the HAM radio research project, which provides two broadcast strength, and later on, pick up the advanced radio repeater upgrade for radio power overwhelming. While you're at it, don't forget about computer consoles. Towards the mid-game, you'll need plenty of these too. Without enough intel, you'll be unable to start certain schemes. Minions are there to do dirty work, and you're here to scheme. And that takes organisation. Always keep your criminal networks busy and don't leave them idle. What are you paying them for anyway? If you've got inactive networks, you'll see a notification on the global stage icon and the network tower will pulse. Networks that aren't busy doing nefarious deeds are only earning a passive trickle of gold, which is less than you'd earn by completing schemes. And gold is good. Well not that kind of good. When it's in your hands, it's truly evil. What you don't want then is a world map filled with lazy crims and flashing towers. Use your networks to either harvest resources via schemes or tick off heat reduction schemes to prevent them being locked and thus cutting off that passive trickle of gold. Some schemes will require you to dispatch specialist minions, be they scientists, guards, valets or technicians, or even a mix of a few. Crank up your training counts for each specialist minion so that you've always got enough to launch these schemes without interfering with research or the protection of your lair. Don't be shy with those buttons. If you're managing things properly, you'll have more than enough gold to pay for them. Which leads us to another bottleneck that belongs in the shark tank, minion training. Equipment is well and good, but without the scientists to man them, these whiteboards are a waste of space and you won't be researching anything more nefarious than a ham sandwich. Remember that minions need to eat, sleep, relax and top up their smarts, so they're not always available to work, as much as I've tried to lobby otherwise and push through official policy allowing 24-hour shifts. This means you'll need more than one specialist per object if you want research to go on ticking up uninterrupted while Gordon goes off for a pasty in the mess hall. Once again, up your training counts if you're running low on manpower. Your specialist minion reserves will replenish faster with a busy, well-equipped training facility that looks like this and leads to uninterrupted research. Keep on top of training and you'll ensure the science gets done. Not a cake in sight though, weirdly. Every evil mastermind is power hungry, but as it turns out, so is your lair. We've all been there, one moment you're plotting which minion to randomly execute in the next. Damnation. Power outages are terrible for many reasons. It means research stops, broadcasts end, so there's no schemes or territories, zero training for your minions, and even worse, your security doors are wide open. Oh, and your pesky prisoners are set loose as well to wreak havoc. In short then, no power, bad. A quick tip to prevent disaster is turning off unused equipment. This can restore power to your base while you get things sorted out. But this is a last resort. Prevent power outages by prioritizing generators wherever you can. You're probably spotting a theme by this point. Go large. Building lots of generators is future-proofing. Investing in a few capacitors will also help to prevent disaster when you overextend and run out of juice, providing backup power until you can fix things properly. 
When things get crowded and space is at a premium, you might feel like you're running a power station rather than a criminal enterprise. To prevent this, research the nuclear power generator early, sell your old generators and replace them with shiny new nuclear ones which occupy less space for the power they create. Huh, where did, uh, where did everyone go? Guys, where are my underlings? Back here, you idiots. If your base is looking like a graveyard, you've probably got one of two problems. Not enough minions, or not enough minion capacity. Your lair attracts minions at a set default rate, but if you hit the capacity limit, no more will arrive and you'll be missing out on obedient meat stacks. I mean, employees. Build lockers to expand your base's capacity and start this as early as possible. You can never, ever, ever have enough lockers. Trust us, go nuts. If you've put up loads of lockers but your base is still barren, then you'll need to buy some minions. Pop into the minion training screen and buy, buy, buy. You're only limited by your capacity here and your cash, so hordes of lackeys will quickly pour into your lair if you can afford them. There we go, a healthy looking lair full of obedient, underpaid servants. Just how we like it. Minions, networks, schemes and gold are no use if you haven't got the storage to hoard your ill-gotten gains. Cash-strapped masterminds will hemorrhage minions who aren't getting paid, like this lot. Come back here, you cowards. If you're always running out of gold, it might be because you're wasting it when your vault is full. Gold is capped at your storage limit, so earnings from your criminal network are wasted if your vault's at 100%. A pathetic little vault like this will simply not do. You want enough space that you're almost never hitting your gold cap. Something a little more like this. If you're strapped for cash in the early phases of the game, don't forget to claim rewards for optional objectives. Even modest amounts can make a difference and might unstick you from a gold drought. More and more appear as the game continues and rewards for side stories, although harder to claim, are insanely lucrative. $100,000? Yes, please. Last but not least comes vital research. These can keep your machinations in motion. Improvements like the ham radio, larger storage bays and criminal network upgrades yield new, more efficient objects which increase resource throughput and will prevent your operation from stalling. We know every mastermind loves traps, but even a dirty business is just that, business. Run your criminal enterprise effectively first, then worry about your murder corridor second. But the best research option by far to prevent a crunch is stairs. Yep, yeah, you heard me right, stairs. These allow you to expand your lair to another level and make more of everything. Power, minion capacity, training, the whole lot. Grab improved mining techniques followed by stairs the moment your lair is starting to look a little crowded. And that's a wrap. Using all of the above techniques, your quest for world domination will flow as smoothly as the blood of your enemies. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe to our channel for more Evil Genius 2 content and we will see you in the next one.